Let's talk about the DJI M30T, the ultimate enterprise and inspection drone. Look, with over four cameras, a portable airframe, and an impeccable user experience for the pilots, this drone reigns king over all the other inspection drones, even the M300, as this zoom camera has a 48 megapixel sensor versus a 20 megapixel sensor on that M300. With four cameras up front, including the three on your payload, the one on the FPV, and all the other obstacle avoidance sensors providing 360 degrees of protection, the front of this M30T actually looks like a spider's eye with all of those sensors. But paired with this brand new remote, the same remote that you get with the Agris T40, you have multiple methodologies of cycling between camera views and multiple methodologies of navigating between the various settings on this drone including that laser rangefinder. So in public safety, you can drop a pin to a subject, a hotspot, et cetera, and save and share that information very easily thanks to that laser rangefinder found on the camera payload here. Look, let's be honest, the M30T will excel at jobs like cell tower inspections, utility inspections, construction progressions, roof inspections, and really any infrastructure inspections as a whole. Public safety is gonna love this drone because it's by far the most powerful portable drone that fits within the same size case as our old Phantom 4 Pros fit into. Look, public safety, you're gonna love this for overwatch, hotspot detection, search and rescue, and a few other things, but not, but not anything mapping related or accident reconstruction. Can this drone do mapping with a 12 megapixel global shutter? This can do mapping, but compared to the Mavic 3 Enterprise, that drone does the mapping in literally half the time with double the quality and or resolution. Uh, so we're gonna have a video coming up here shortly on comparing the Mavic 3 Enterprise against the M30T. Because in all honesty, can this drone do mapping missions? Yes, it can. Albeit again, there's much better drones at a cheaper price point that can do much better job at mapping as a whole. And in order to be effective drone pilots, we really have to have an efficient and portable, powerful drone. The M30T offers an unprecedented level of portability. Again, folding up into a case the size of the same case of a Phantom 4 Pro from the past. This drone is so portable portable and easy to get going, you can literally arrive on site and literally unfold this drone and be up in the air in about 35 seconds. That's at least our experience that we have found so far. I will also say when you compare the M300 against the M30T, the M300 is a little bit awkward to unfold and actually get going. It's, it's a hassle to take it out of the case, put the landing gear on. This drone literally out of the box in the air, 35 seconds. We actually believe that the M30T offers a lot more value than the M300 and the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Here's why. The camera payload between the M30T and the M300 seems comparable, except it's not. The M30T has a superior camera payload when comparing this camera payload to the H20T on the M300. This has a superior zoom, in my opinion, with that 48 megapixel sensor versus the 20 megapixel sensor on the M300. Now, if you've actually flown an M300, you know that this is not the remote that you get with the M300, even though it should be. Flying that M300 on limited buttons actually makes trying to find the right button to cycle through cameras a lot more difficult. This camera payload combined with the remote is the ultimate package to be an efficient and consistent drone pilot. This remote is also customizable and superior, again, compared to the Mavic 3 Enterprise or the M300. Now here's what no one is talking about that's really crucial. Because of the very smart intuitive design by DJI with the new BS30 battery charger, this M30T drone will last longer than an M300 or a Mavic 3 Enterprise simply because of how DJI has devised a plan to keep battery endurance longer over time. That new BS30 charger allows three separate charging 
modes to essentially be able to cycle between, you know, a storage mode, a 90% charge and a full charge. So you can actually leave those batteries in the charger if you're on a public safety team and they'll be stored at 50% and you can just cycle it to charge. And those batteries charge very, very quickly in about half the time that it takes the Mavic 3 Enterprise. But here's the thing. Not only is DJI gonna make this drone and the subsequent batteries last longer than the M300 and the Mavic 3 Enterprise, DJI knows exactly what drone pilots need to be safe. And the features that they have put in this drone showcase that what DJI is giving consumer pilots is setting them up to fail because they know exactly what you need as a pilot to be safe. So what has DJI provided in this Enterprise drone? Because DJI has made it very clear in a recent release as well that the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Classic, and the Mavic 3 Cinna will never ever have an SDK to be able to do mapping missions and advanced autonomous missions as a whole. So DJI is very clearly separating the enterprise user from the consumer user. And some of my favorite features over the life of flying drones over the past, wow, 12 years now, one of those things is having attitude mode, right? Attitude mode allows for the smoothest flights, the smoothest video motion. It allows us to take over emergency control if our drone is wigging out because the obstacle avoidance sensors are too sensitive or you're having a fly away or many other things. That attitude mode is like your safety catch all. And with this particular aircraft, you do have attitude mode built right into the aircraft as the flight control modes are on the top left of the remote. They're not actually on the center of the remote. Mode. So programmable flight modes. This drone also has self-heating batteries, unlike the Mavic 3 Enterprise. But also this drone is great for drone teams and programs because of the battery charging system, making those batteries last longer, but also because you have a customizable remote. This remote and all the buttons on it can be fully customizable per pilot. So let's say you have Dan flying cell tower inspections. He's got the remote set up one way, but Paul and Rob like to do it another Another way for marketing. All you have to do is select which user and it stays in the remote. All the settings stay in the remote. Here's the thing, you also have a lot more control on this aircraft. There is one particular setting I really wanna get rid of that precision landing. I know how to land a drone DJI, thank you for your help, but it actually makes things worse uh, sometimes. In addition, the M30T has multiple strobe lights to empower drone pilots to fly at civil twilight or at night. And I also have to say, um, I flew this drone at night to aid with our local police on a, a search for a subject. And the FPV camera and the low light on that FPV camera are really, really incredible. The thermal capability is amazing as well. And while I do love that you can showcase and see, you know, two camera feeds at once, DJI, once again, is kind of preying on pilots. You can't any longer be a pilot and know the step-by-step -step process of, of conducting certain drone missions, you have to have creative capabilities to solve problems. You know, for example, point of interest mode. For example, you know, if you wanna set up a double grid autonomous mapping mission, but you just flew a single grid, well, instead of creating an entirely additional flight plan that takes entirely way too long, you can just change the course angle on the original flight plan and voila, you saved yourself a whole bunch of time. The other thing that I love about this drone too are the discrete modes. So you can literally turn all the lights off on this drone and fly fully clandestinely. I absolutely love that about this drone. And I have to say the stability and agility of this aircraft, it's not quite Inspire 2 level, but it flies so much better than the new Mavics, it's not even funny. The fact that we have the RTK module built in means we can do precision mapping, but again, probably wouldn't use this drone for mapping if that was my primary drone mission. If I were doing inspections and I also had to do mapping, well, good news, this drone can do it. 
Again, with a 48 megapixel zoom camera, we have optical zoom up to 16 times and a total hybrid zoom of 200 times, same as the M300. The wide camera is a 12 megapixel shutter, but it's a global shutter, so it's really good for mapping. And then we have that 640p thermal camera. Now on this thermal camera, you do have more advanced features than you do on say like the Mavic 3 Enterprise. The ability to draw boxes to see maximum and minimum temperatures within a certain range, the ability to set temperature alarms, isotherms. The only thing that I really don't like about this thermal camera, and it's the same as, as the M300, if you're flying and let's say you tilt your camera up to get an idea of where you're flying, if the sun is in your image, the thermal camera shuts off because it's quote unquote burning the sensor. Now I've seen another M300, the M300 are great friend and instructor John Wakey from the uh, FDNY on the Props Public Safety Program. His M300 literally has burn marks on the thermal feed from looking at the sun too much. So the, the quality of DJI's thermal sensors has definitely gone down. But one feature that I love about this thermal camera over the other thermal sensors, again, especially with the Mavic, is that you have the ability to upsample the video so you can actually get the equivalent of a 720p video. And also when you're shooting photos, you can supersize those photos and DJI does does a really good job of providing that as well. In all honesty, just to quickly and succinctly wrap this up, this is by far my favorite drone from DJI in a very, very long time. I love how they're rewarding pilots with the safety features we know and love in order to avoid emergencies and be those top gun pilots that I know many of you are. You can avoid flyaways and you have a lot more um, control than you do with other drones. I love the remote and the heads up display with the 360 obstacle avoidance kind of gives you that fighter pilot like feel and flying this drone in attitude mode is incredible I've flown it in up to 35 mile an hour winds and this thing just parks in the sky you know when you compare this drone to others there are so many additional you know slider wheels and functionality that really just make this bird amazing I mean again for public safety you're trying to live stream you have multiple HDMI outs and all the simple features that you've come to love now, quick warning, as many people know that there have been security issues with DJI drones previously, I do want to give it to you straight since I'm not being paid by DJI for this video. DJI says that you can have multiple network functionalities to limit the remote's capacity for aggregating data. But in order to activate the drone, you actually have to give it access to Chinese servers to do that, which I shouldn't have to do. But that said, in order to actually make the drone safe and not communicate with any other foreign servers, you have to go literally back into the main settings of the entire application and change it back to network only. And even when I put brand new batteries in the drone, it still wants me to change that network mode to quote unquote, activate the batteries. Um, look, DJI, I'll take my chances on the batteries, thanks. Um, all in all, to sum this up, between the attitude mode, the customized, amazing, huge display, this remote is really ergonomic. You have multiple batteries, so it lasts a very, very long time. I actually don't even have my other battery in there at the moment. But all the functionality on this bird, I think once you fly this drone, you'll fully understand why it's better than all the Mavic Enterprises. You'll also understand that you don't have to deal with the complexities of the M300. And this drone is just portable, stable, powerful, and it also has a great presentation with clients. I have not tried the RTK functionality as most of the mapping missions that we've been doing are with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the Parrot Anafi AI, and the Wingtra 1 um, Gen 2, which is a phenomenal mapping drone. Long story short, if you love flying and uh, you need to do inspections, marketing, uh, you need to do photos, you need to do even some basic mapping, some rapid ortho mosaics, this drone provides the most value for the money, hands down, no questions asked. If you wanna get the most out of this drone and you wanna learn how to set up all the right settings, the right gains, the right tilt speeds, the right customization to do certain jobs, you've gotta check out our Don't Crash course. We just launched it 
on the M30T and we go through everything on this drone. In fact, believe it or not, to go through every single setting on the remote was about an hour of raw footage on a one take wonder. So if that communicates just how complex this drone can be, Hopefully that paints the picture of exactly what you need to see. My name is Paul, this is Drone U HQ. Thank you for joining me. If you have a question or comment, put them below. And also check us out on Instagram, thedroneu.com. We've been doing lots of comparisons between this drone and other drones. You won't wanna miss it. Thanks for joining me, see you next time.